I'm going to record. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to go back to sharing. So, and we should all, all should be well. So now I'm, I'm yeah, for some reason I'm blind again. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And uh, so, so we're recording. Uh, so good morning. <laughs> good morning, everyone. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, this is Hypolager Healthcare Special Interest Group. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we were having some fun earlier uh, chatting and I lost track of time, so there you go. Uh, so uh, as I was saying before to a couple of folks, uh, for some reason the last few iterations of Zoom on my machine, uh, if I share my screen, I just don't, my, my participant list, it shows me eight participants, but it doesn't enumerate them. And so, uh, so I'm blind otherwise. So Erica is going to help me out when we do introductions, just so that I have a sense for who's who's on the call, uh, and we can make introductions. Um, and it's always nice to to hear uh, regulars on the call, which is always great. Um, but uh, anyway, before we get started, uh, as always, uh, I, I do want to mention that we are recording this, and uh, as a result, we do also uh, want uh, everyone to be aware of our antitrust policy. Uh, so on the screen, which I'm sharing, you should see the uh, the notice. Uh, please feel free to do a read through on that. There's a URL for details on the antitrust policy. In short, what it means is please don't share any kind of IP or any secrets. Uh, this is a public place. It's open source, open community meeting. Uh, and the URL gives you some additional details. Uh, and of course, uh, in short, it just means be a good person. Uh, that said, uh, well, let's go through introductions. And this is, <laughs> this is part of our, well, I, where I will ask uh, Erica to give me a hand. Since normally I can see everybody on the call, I see I just see ten participants on the call. So, uh, so what I'll ask is uh, if there's anyone new on the call, uh, new to the organization, uh, that would like to introduce themselves, this would be a great opportunity to do so. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, where you're from, and your interest in using uh, hyperledger tech, uh, uh, blockchain technologies in the healthcare space. And so I'll hand over to you, Erica, if you happen to see anybody that might be maybe new on the call. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Um, I see a few regulars. Um, I we have a Cam Lash on the call. I, oh yeah, we oh. know Cam Lash. Okay. Good morning, Cam Lash. Then, good afternoon. Good Actually, morning. good evening. I should say. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Tariq. Okay, uh, Tariq. I think was is new. Hello, Tariq. Hello. How are you? Good. Uh, you want to give us a little bit of a, a introduction about yourself? Sure, yeah. I'm a finance student from McMaster University. I'm really interested in blockchain technology and its integration in healthcare. Uh, I'm really interested in to kind, of, kind of getting to know how uh, I can contribute to this project and be basically um, make sure that everything is uh, as efficient as possible when it comes to project management. And uh, as much, I just want to learn as much as possible when it comes to blockchain. And yeah, this is just a learning opportunity for me. And it's just uh, another opportunity for me to kind of expand my, 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 my skills in regards to blockchain technology and, and yeah. Oh, excellent. I, I think we may, may have met through the, the Hyperledger chat channel. Yeah, we have. Excellent, yeah. Oh, good, great to have you on the call. Uh, great to have you here for the first time. Um, what, I'll, uh, what I'll do is just as a reminder, and this is true for anyone, uh, and we'll get through the rest of the list in just short order here. Uh, I have a couple things for mostly for no, new folks, but then again for folks that, are, uh, that haven't maybe participated quite yet. Uh, we do keep a membership directory here on the uh, URL, uh, if you look at it here, uh, and it's membership directory. This is part of our wiki. Uh, and this is a great opportunity just to get to, oh, uh, Tariq is there already. Excellent. Good for you, Tariq. Uh, so that's really what this is for, is so folks can uh, connect one-on-one uh, -on -one and, uh, and it's sort of a meet and greet opportunity. So, uh, and then as well, uh, we have an FAQ for the special interest group here. Uh, and so feel free to read through that. And of course, if you ever have questions, and I think Tariq has already learned this, you can go to our chat channel and uh, and contact either myself or anyone on the on that channel uh, directly if you have any questions or thoughts, uh, and it's a great opportunity to get involved. Uh, we'll be walking through shortly our subgroup updates. Uh, we have three separate subgroups, and that's really kind of boots on the ground where the work really gets done for the special interest group. And so we'll talk more about that momentarily. Um, anyone else on the call that wants to introduce themselves that that's maybe new or newer to the uh, to the special interest group? Okay, 
Um, so, uh, so Erica, can you just kind of maybe if you can, and again, I'm sort of blind on participants. Can you just sort of read through the list? I'd like just to, just to say hello to everybody. Absolutely. Um, we have Mike McCoy. Hi, Mike. <laughs> hey, Mike. Um, yeah, we saw Mike earlier. Good morning to we you. Have we have Ravish, um, uh, Kamlesh, uh, Tariq, uh, Jeff Stolman, uh, Dr. Holt, uh, Kumaravel. Oh, and, and, and that sounds like a new person. Uh, yeah, possibly. I, could, could we maybe get an introduction from that person? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, uh, yeah, I joined a few uh, meetings, I believe. Let me introduce myself. So I'm exploring blockchain for quite some time. So just wanted to see, like, you know, how in the healthcare uh, section, uh, you know, uh, the blockchain is leveraged. So this would be a, a you know, uh, kind of a. Oh, great. Uh, not just get to know, yeah, more about uh, how this is used in, uh, you know, oh, excellent. healthcare. Well, great, Thank great you. to have you. And and what's your name again, please? This is Kumar Avel. Kumar. Oh, my. Oh. Yeah. Kumar, 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 yeah. Kumar yeah. Okay. Well, very good. Great to have you. Uh, thanks for joining us on the call. Really appreciate it. Uh, where are you calling from? Okay. Uh, I'm from India. Oh, okay. Well, good evening to you then, I think. Yeah. Oh, very good. Yeah. Well, great to have you on the call. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have John Hatchell, and I think that is it. Oh, okay. Well, well. Good morning to everyone. And again, <laughs> I feel terrible. Uh, this is the second second time around where my my Zoom uh, version uh, just makes me blind uh, when I'm sharing my screen, so I just can't see anybody. Okay. Uh, so let's move along. Uh, if anyone has any uh, announcements that they'd like to make uh, regarding uh, some of the work that they're doing in in the healthcare space as it relates to blockchain technologies. Uh, I'd be happy to to use this time to sort of share that information. Nothing going on. Okay. Um, so let's move forward to our subgroups update then. Uh, and again, as I said, uh, really subgroups are kind of boots on the ground. That's this is where a lot of our work gets done. Uh, and I I believe I don't know is is Dennis on the call yet? Do we know? Or anyone that's that will be representing the patient subgroup this morning? Okay, so uh, so I did get an email from Dennis this morning. I, he's planning to be on the call, uh, but I could talk a little bit about uh, some of the work that they're doing. Uh, and and just as a backgrounder, uh, Dennis uh, uh, is a he's based out of Switzerland. He's his background is in pharma. He he's been consulting with uh, quite a number of large pharma organizations over the years. Great guy to work with. Uh, he's been running the the patient subgroup for uh, uh, about a year or so. Uh, he's got a great team uh, working with him. They have developed a, an e-consent solution um, and they're using both Fabric, uh, Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth as their solution. Uh, it has gotten to a point, uh, proof of concept, it's very successful. They're actually looking to find a way to perhaps shop that around uh, at a com more commercial level. Uh, and so if anyone has an interest in uh, the patient subgroup, uh, where, where really the focus is at the patient level. Uh, and in, in this particular case, the use case that they're uh, following up on is e-consent uh, in the pharmacological space. This is really the place to be. It's, it's a great uh, subgroup, very, very active. Uh, and if we can get Dennis on the call, I'm hoping he'll show up a little bit later uh, this morning. Uh, we'll have him uh, provide an update uh, just to supplement that. Um, they, uh, as, as is the case for most subgroups, uh, subgroups tend to meet every two weeks, so every other week, um, and, uh, and they're typically an hour, uh, and uh, uh, the links that you could sort of see uh, up on the screen here will take us to the individual subgroup and give you de details about contact information and, uh, and, uh, and when and where those meetings happen. Okay, let's move ahead to the payer subgroup, uh, Ravish. Hi, Rich. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, payer subgroup, uh, you know, we are, uh, just to quickly, um, you know, give a overview of, we are more focused on from payer industry standpoint. It does include, you know, payer provider, um, obvi obviously, um, you know, uh, pharmacy, so on and so forth. We are, uh, we have already started working on a POC around the modernization of pharmacy management more focusing on how to reduce the fraud, bring in the flexibility for the consumer, and um, obviously leading to a much better secure. We know there is a, there every other day there are new rules coming out of related to consent. 
So, you know, all that is baked into that POC. Um, we just started, uh, the lab got approved, I think, a couple, year, a couple of weeks uh, back. And we are right now in, um, in detailing the use cases and, and accordingly working through the POC. Um, I also feel that um, it's this is the right time for anyone who wants to jump in and start exploring. Um, we are going to be building kind of a full-fledged application to demonstrate the usage of the framework. So a lot of opportunity to, to contribute um, in, in the pair subgroup at this time. Excellent. And, uh, and I'm just going to bring up, uh, uh, we have, uh, we, we now maintain on the Hyperledger site webinars. Uh, and I just wanted to call out the fact that Ravish gave a presentation uh, a last, I just want to say last session, I think it was, uh, on uh, some of the work that he and his team are doing. So if anyone wants to sort of uh, to watch that, this is the, this is a great, great opportunity to do so. So thanks, thanks, Ravish, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and you want to give it a little bit of an update as to uh, when you meet and and how often? Yes. Yes, so we meet every other uh, Fridays. It's not this Friday. It's going to be next Friday. The next meeting is next Friday, 1 p.m. EST, uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are exploring to reschedule because there are some folks who join uh, outside U.S. So just optimizing the time. But currently, no plans to change. It's still 1 p.m. EST every other Friday. Not not the Friday when we have this uh, general meeting. It's the the next Friday and on. So opposite, yeah, so opposite, basically opposite the general meetings. Yes. Yeah, yes. excellent, very good. Thank you, perfect. Uh, okay, for the healthcare interoperability subgroup, uh, Stephen Elliott leads that. Uh, generally speaking, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Erica, but I don't think Stephen's on the call this morning. Uh, he, has, uh, he has a conflict with this uh, meeting time. Uh, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of an update on, on what's going on there. Uh, they have their uh, subgroup meetings on Monday uh, mornings. Uh, they, uh, the most recent uh, meeting, I think, uh, was pushed, I think, uh, until either next week or the week after. Uh, they had to do a reschedule. Um, but basically, the uh, Healthcare Interoperability Subgroup, or HIS, uh, strangely enough, is uh, focused on um, uh, semantic issues uh, with interoperability and, uh, and Stephen is, is developing uh, a use case, uh, sort of a bottom up use case, uh, which allows, um, uh, allows uh, groups to uh, make use of a, a Hyperledger fabric solution uh, for the sake of interoperability. And the interoperability is less syntactic and more semantic. And so you can imagine some of the interesting use cases that come out of that. Um, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, they were looking at, uh, oh gosh, I think it's vaccinations uh, was, uh, was the use case that they were looking at uh, for their first product, uh, POC. So um, he's, uh, he's in the process of putting, the, put, putting together the subgroup. I think the subgroup is maybe just about a half a dozen people, uh, maybe a, a couple of folks uh, fewer than that. And so he's looking to spin that up and, uh, and, and start uh, developing this uh, sometime very soon. So if you have an interest in, in interoperability, uh, and again, this is uh, more semantic interoperability and maybe less syntactic, uh, this would be a really interesting subgroup. Uh, Steven's got a great background in, in the healthcare space. Uh, his focus is mostly uh, technology. Uh, and so uh, if you have an interest in, you know, sort of a, a, a deeper understanding of using uh, 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 blockchain technologies to solve uh, interoperability issues. This is a great subgroup to, to be working in. Um, okay, that said, uh, we'll move forward to our ad hoc teams. We, we have a couple of ad hoc teams. The, the way that the teams work is uh, they generally focus on very specific issues, uh, maybe tend to be a little bit more uh, sort of temporally uh, sort of box, time box. Uh, that said, uh, we always have, I always joke, we, we always have an interest in uh, redesigning our wiki. Uh, this, if, for those of you that probably are aware of this, is, uh, we use a product called Confluence. Uh, and honestly, um, I'm always looking for someone that has uh, some level of really good design uh, expertise using Confluence, because I can imagine there are always ways to find uh, better ways to, to sort of develop uh, around some of the work that we're doing here for not only this uh, healthcare special interest group for 
but for also for all SIGs and all work, uh, work groups uh, that are part of Hyperledger. And so I always just I always want to keep that sort of door open. That if if anyone has an interest uh, with with design experience, uh, I'd love to be, find a way to work with them on that. And uh, we also have a use case development team uh, that's led by Erica. And Erica, do you want to give us an update on that? Sure. Thank you, Rich. Um, so the only use case that's really kind of going forward right now is the drug supply chain, which is the one I wrote. And the text part of that is is done, and now we're going to move on to working on the visual the visual aspects of it. Um, and Indira is helping me with it, um, and Dennis also uh, provides us a lot of guidance for our group. Um, our group is really just providing high level, pretty high level um, use cases. And the way I've approached it for me, it's hard to write high level, so I've approached it more from an academic writing standpoint. So I need to really tailor down um, on the verbiage. And uh, so yeah, it's we're moving along um, slowly. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's where we're at. Hopefully we'll have that use case to present at some point or to at least show people. Yeah, and, and, it's, and what's really great about this particular team is this really, uh, the, the, it's got a great history. Um, it came out of a, a HIMSS conference uh, observation from a couple of years ago, obviously not this past HIMSS conference because uh, that kind of went virtual. But the one prior to that, which uh, uh, we basically uh, had, a, had a booth set up uh, for Hyperledger. Uh, and so uh, we had a, quite a number of people that were asking us about uh, use cases and uh, and really the, the the ask that they were making was a better understanding of uh, sort of the context around where uh, blockchain technology tools might be most effective particularly in the healthcare industry and so um so we sort of brought that back to the team here and i think uh, originally uh i think it was wendy uh that the sort of kicked off that uh, that team and then erica took over the, the driver behind that was uh, developing a, a use case, effectively a use case template uh, in, in a way such that we can develop a use case and then uh, have multiple use cases that follow very, very similar sort of overall structure. So it's very easy to get that information out, uh, not, not just to SIG membership, but to, uh, to the healthcare community to really effectively to educate them and what, where the real strengths of uh, blockchain technologies happen to be. And that, you know, that really fits to things like where does the DLT fit in? What are the sort of the strengths and weaknesses of a DLT? Uh, again, in the, in the context of, of healthcare specifically, uh, same too for, you know, uh, uh, well, I, I'd say cryptocurrency, but uh, generally speaking, we don't use currency, but, uh, but similar uh, crypto solutions in the healthcare space. Uh, and then also for uh, SSI, self-sovereign identity or identity, digital identity management, uh, again, in the healthcare space. Uh, and on that, sort of on that last point, uh, it's, it's it always interesting. Um, digital identity is getting to be a, a really big deal right now, particularly as we're sort of working our way through the COVID virus. Uh, there's an awful lot of work uh, right now with contract, uh, contact tracing uh, and and uh, managing uh, digital identity assets uh, as it relates to uh, uh, COVID virus testing. So it's uh, from my perspective, if we sort of look at where blockchain technologies seem to be uh, maturing very quickly, uh, digital identity seems to be a big big space that's that's coming together very quickly here. Okay, uh, well, thanks for that, Erica. Yeah, uh, the, this use case team is, is a great team. Um, uh, very, very interesting stuff coming out of this, and I, I think also very promising. I think there's going to be some really good value that, that uh, uh, we'll put out to the community through this team. Okay, uh, any questions before we move forward? All right, so um, as probably most people know, um, we uh, spent uh, several months on uh, really 100% focus on the COVID-19 virus, the pandemic itself. Uh, we had about, a, I think, a half dozen special topic meetings uh, through March, April, May. And, uh, and we subsequently sort of, uh, starting in June, we sort of came back to our general meetings sort of uh, cycle. But uh, that clearly, as, as I think most of, us know, most of us know, particularly here in the US, uh, the virus continues to sort of propagate. Um, and it seems that we're sort of coming into maybe a second wave or maybe the tail end of the first wave. No one's quite sure, I guess. 
but there's clearly a continuing need for uh, support in this area. Uh, and so as a result, uh, I, I always want to just uh, provide uh, sort of an update uh, on, uh, on where we can get funding uh, at a both a global level and then here in the US uh, specifically so that if there is any interest uh, in uh, anyone on the call that wants to develop uh, uh, solutions that address the COVID uh, pandemic, uh, ideally using blockchain technologies, uh, these are some great funding opportunities that, that I have up here, um, and I update these fairly regularly. Um, Ideally, what, it, what I do is I sort of walk uh, each of these uh, uh, websites, um, sort of uh, take a look to see if there's, there have been any updates on the site itself, and then I'll note it here. And so you can sort of see uh, for each of the callouts, I, I show an update. Uh, in general, I would say uh, at a global level, um, it's a little bit sparse. I think uh, just ongoing grant station is probably the place to go. Uh, and then here in the U.S., uh, and I think I've talked about this before, but uh, for particularly for small businesses uh, and startups, uh, or or uh, small businesses that want to do work with uh, academic institutions, uh, the government uh, here in the U.S. has something called SBIRs and STTRs. I call them sitters and sitters. Uh, and so you can see uh, sort of that first bullet point uh, for the National Accounts Institute. Uh, great opportunities. Uh, exist, uh, continue to exist as, a, as they relate to uh, healthcare uh, and uh, specifically the COVID uh, pandemic uh, uh, and looking, they're really effectively looking for solutions there. Same also for the National Institute of Health, the NIH. Uh, and then uh, I think, uh, I think Ravish, uh, you're connected with the COVID Help for Families, is that correct? Yeah. Um... Uh, yeah, Rich, uh, this is just a site to, you know, submit a, you know, if someone is in need, um, you know, for what they're looking for, even the not, not for profits, um, and someone who can help. So it's just a, a ways to connect those, um, you know, those two, two, you know, organizations or people who are looking for, for help or who can help. You know, obviously, I mean, some of us are privileged to be able to work from home. But there are a lot of people who are not in a position to do that or or their job does not allow that to happen. So it's just a mechanism to bring means to, to folks who need help. Excellent. Uh, so it's a great opportunity. Uh, and again, I, I posted up here for uh, for folks to sort of uh, take a look at and uh, and see how they might be able to get involved in that. Uh, and then finally, uh, I call out sort of separately UC Davis uh, Office of Research has a great resource, which probably is, uh, is a great catch-all here in the U.S. Uh, and again, they, they do a very good job of sort of uh, aggregating uh, opportunities um, uh, really within here, here within the U.S. Uh, and again, these are all uh, COVID-related uh, uh, opportunities. And so I, I'd ask uh, if anyone has interest to, to sort of dig into that and, and see what they might be able to turn up. Uh, and if you, if anyone does uh, identify uh, a good solution that maybe is on those, uh, maybe isn't on the list, please let me know. I'd be happy to post it up here. Uh, you know, we we just as much as we're not uh, sort of driving these special topic meetings. Uh, clearly, you know, we just want to stay focused on the fact that uh, there's ongoing uh, need for uh, solutions developments uh, as it relates to the pandemic. Okay, uh, any questions as it relates to, uh, to uh, so, sort of where we're at with the pandemic and, and how uh, sort of best to serve, uh, serve the needs in that space? This is uh, Jonathan. I, I've heard a lot about this overlay capture network from Paul Nose, and I think there's the whole uh, uh, collaboration for COVID credentials. And I've seen a little bit about it percolated through uh, Project Aries. Uh, actually, a year, like almost like a November, that actually Paul was trying to get traction with a RFC. Is there any in the semantic interoperability working group or in this working group any sort of talk about implementing that for at least the COVID credentials? Uh, so short answer is no. Um, but, uh, I, you know, it may, it may be something worth uh, digging a little bit uh, more into. Do you have any more information? Uh, anything like a link that you might be able to share? Yeah, I think uh, covidcredentials.org, um, I think. Uh, so it's, it's a huge, um, I, when I first actually uh, got the email, I, I just signed up for the thread and just the, the, the listserv. But 
it was um uh, amazing that actually like they had you know, like ran out and made a press release that um consensus health is now a partner and i was like no no i just signed up for that listserv and so i just took it, it took me back as far as like you know their uh, objectives and it was really getting some press I'm just wondering, actually, if there is any standards there, or uh, my concern is actually there. It's 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 this happening outside of my typical media for standards development, I, like in IEEE or in Hyperledger or in my work in W3C. So I'm I'm kind of worried that actually it's there's some uh, concern for a, a, a patent or and or other licensing that actually like uh, it's a it's a, a so hook steals actually, the IP. Yeah. And I'm kind of, so it's just outside the realm of my comfort zone. So I'm just wondering actually if anyone else has any experience with it. Cause they, they, at some point they did have, you know, a hundred people working on joint documents. So they had these huddle pages and it, I mean, it seems like actually a, a huge amount of work and also overlapped with a lot with what I was doing in the, uh, in the IEEE uh, identity and healthcare subgroup that uh, Jack Callahan and I were working on for vaccination credentials, which I think I presented up to this group before. Yeah, uh, so I don't know anything through Aries necessarily, uh, and if anyone on the call happens to have any uh, information or even uh, maybe a, a link to some of that information, uh, please do uh, do so through the chat. Um, I can tell you, uh, I do know uh, quite a number of organizations that are that are doing um, credentialing, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, I, I do some work with Providence Health uh, here in the in the Northwest and. Uh, we have a we have a project that uh, that's that's coming together uh, from that perspective, um, but uh, generally speaking, otherwise, n no, I haven't found anything. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to bring up the URL that uh, looks like uh, Erica found, and we'll see if we'll sort of we'll do this live and see where this takes us, and may and maybe Jonathan, you can tell us if this is the right. Uh, spot that we're talking yeah so that's it and i think yeah. um and there's a whole bunch of huddle pages and whatnot for like um uh four different streams and it seems like they're using verifiable credentials but it really is this overlay capture network that actually is um i, I think it's it actually it's it's brilliant in some senses in the in the sense that uh it really handles uh the semantics and then there's different layers um of interoperability, including actually uh, languages, actually they can transform it into different languages. But it certainly it's um, much more complex than what we actually we are working on in verifiable credentials. We're still in, still dealing with like a, you know, just a simple claim <laughs> name, NPI number, uh, maybe a, the vaccine. And so I think it is uh, it's interesting, but I. Like I, I'm just curious. Like you see Evanim in there, and so which is part of like you know sovereign network. Oh sure, and yeah, so, yeah. Uh, transmute and there's but. Um, so so I guess I, maybe the question is, uh, <laughs> who's driving this? Right, and it's not happening within any sort of uh, standards organization. Yeah, and and honestly, just just offhand, uh, it may be just you know the, the timing for this uh sometimes these things have to come together very quickly and so you you sort of end run around some of the more formal uh sort of uh yeah and, and, and so, that's part of my yeah. reservation as well is that you know rushing this through you know, standards organizations is that you basically get you know a bad standard because it's it's not vetted or you're not actually getting the the result that actually like we had hoped it would and it certainly uh, there's this precedent there's this impetus to actually to get something out there but um and, and this also came i think if you guys heard like um bill gates actually on reddit was saying oh in the future we're going to have an immunity passport and i think the, the dilemma that i've mentioned this before is that it's not it's like binary that oh you either you've been exposed to covid and therefore therefore you are immune or you've got the vaccine and therefore it's efficacious there's a whole world of governance models and just the plain healthcare we need to see if actually a vaccine works. We need a, a reporting structure. We need um, population health um, um, observations to see actually see how efficacious this is. And so there's a lot we actually need to learn. And this just seems like a uh, a quick fix, but it might not fix the underlying problem that we're trying to solve. So does this? Uh, I'm curious to know: is this in any way do they do they sort of correlate this with contact tracing, or is it just really? Uh, a, a credentialing tool. 
Yeah, I, I think one of the use cases I saw, at least in the listserv, was actually documenting a use case for contact tracing. Um, but it's that, that again is also uh, plagued with uh, privacy and ethical challenges. Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, especially here in the U.S. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's there's been an awful lot of pushback, a lot of speculation, a lot of conspiracy theory that that flows around mm -hmm. this. Obviously, I think, and I think also it, on this call, there's actually presented as far as this dichotomy of of different people who actually like, classes of people. Actually, suddenly, this uh, immunity passport contact tracing is suddenly this stigma of yeah. um, really of disparities. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's uh, that, that is absolutely the case. And again, I, I think I don't know if this is necessarily a global issue. I, I think uh, it's going to be really reflective or indicative of the culture. And so I think uh, you know uh, it's it's a sensitivity uh, that, that there's a big driver there, and it, uh, boy, it's going to be a tough kind of a tough way to, to sort of move forward. Um, uh, other other uh, other countries are a little more open about that sort of thing. Uh, here in the U.S., I think it's it's certainly a sensitive issue. Um, well, well, so uh, I'll see if we can dig into this a little bit more, uh, Jonathan. This this is uh, I, I'm I'm now now you got my sort of curiosity curiosity up on this one. So I'll see if I can dig into it and see if, see what we can find about this. Um, and uh, I think Dennis is on the call. Uh, Erica, did I did I catch that right? And again, I'm sort of blind uh, on our list of participants. So uh, Erica is my eyes on on keeping track of who's on the call today. Yeah, I saw him on the Oh, and I thought I heard Dennis. Dennis, good morning. Yes, how are you doing, guys? We're good, good. <laughs> how are you doing? Glad to have you on the call. I, I, I was just listening. <laughs> um, so can I, can I ask you to give us a little bit of an update on the patient subgroup? I, 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 prob I did a little bit of an update. I'm sure I did a service to you, but uh, do you want to give us an update? Sure. Uh, another big change since uh, last meeting. Um, but besides of that, I have also uh, a collaboration with the uh, health agency in Switzerland, and they have a very similar uh, app developed, and it is on the uh, service now. And so far, 12% of the population has downloaded, and the activation is very much, not really very much promising. So there are lots of uh, concerns about privacy, data privacy, and there is a certain um, um, concern that uh, people are uh, having af are afraid of uh, get their data and misused and even hacked. So this is a big challenge for not only for Switzerland, for many of the similar uh, applications. The Swiss application is very much different from the Austrian or German, uh, which is already developed and uh, on service now. It is the data is not. Uh, um, kept uh, in a central database. However, uh, they couldn't, the, the central uh, instances could not uh, still uh, convince the population that it is something uh, not really uh, happened to be misused by anyone. So this is one of the big challenges uh, for such kind of applications. Oh, interesting. Well, so so this is really in line uh, with uh, what we were just talking with Jonathan about, and you know, I was yeah. imagining that maybe maybe the sensitivity was here in the U.S., but but maybe it, it tends to be more of a universal concern about uh, data abuse and and effectively trust. Uh, and so, uh, well, good. That's that's kind of, that's good to know. Uh, not necessarily comforting, but maybe uh, uh, helpful. Uh, for us to have a better sense for you know where where the sensitivities are when it when it comes to you know uh, managing data and uh, where the where the line gets drawn for you know how much is too much, uh, even in the context of you know something like this pandemic. Exactly, and if I uh, think of the clinical monitoring, which is a part of the clinical trial and the patient monitoring. This will be also in the future for IoT variables uh, a big issue. We have to keep and try to build, uh, I mean, appropriate systems and also appropriate uh, communication 
with the population, uh, with, the, with the patients, in order to convince them to implement and to get benefit of it. It's, it's a big challenge. Yeah, interesting. Well, good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the update, Dennis. And thanks also for your insight on that. Uh, it's really good to have you sort of uh, helping us get a sense, f you know, for what's happening in Europe specifically. Uh, and uh, I think, honestly, it, 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 well, it certainly helps me have a better sort of a uh, grasp of, uh, of how, how, we, how we need to think about the solutions that we develop uh, such that, you know, they, they tend to they tend to work for, for everyone and not just for a single population or a single culture. Uh, but Thank thanks. you very much. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Thank you very much. So uh, I think Erica also mentioned that Guillermo uh, Diaz on, on the call. Guillermo, good morning. Hi, how are you, Rich? Good morning. Uh, good day to you. Uh, Guillermo, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but can, can you give us a little bit of an update of, of how, the, uh, how the virus is doing in, in Mexico? I, I, I realize that uh, you guys have been struggling for a, a while there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, actually, uh, yesterday was uh, one of the most uh, deaths here in Mexico. We have around two 2,100 uh, cases, a little bit more, as, as, as I just uh, read before. And of course, uh, the problem here in Mexico is, uh, you know, there are more deaths than the standard. We are about 10% uh, of deaths uh, versus the, the COVID-19 uh, cases. That means that uh, we have a very, uh hard time in terms of the the deaths that we are having uh it's not surprising because uh you know there is a lot of uh, uh diseases in mexico around uh, heart diseases or and uh, uh diabetes so one of the things is that uh, we're trying we still not doing testing that's one of the problems. I don't know why, but this is a policy from the government. But at the same time, uh, society is trying to take control of that and try not to go outside. But the problem is that uh, we are in the, the, I believe, in the worst uh, peak of pandemia. So, so it's a very hard time. And the pronostics are that uh, Maybe in November, we are going to lower the COVID cases, but uh, this is not a good scenario right now. And we believe that at least uh, August, September, it will be a little bit worse. And November maybe uh, will be the peak. That's, that's the, 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 what I read and what I have from the you know the group that I participate here in the in the organization from IT. So so this is this is uh, what what we have for, for you, Rich. Uh, thank you. And and you work you work out of Mexico City, is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks very much for the update, Guillermo. Uh, sir, uh, of course, be safe. Uh, and thank you. yeah, and and appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, clearly, and, and we talked about this a little bit before, uh, the virus continues, uh, and I think uh, getting that report from Guillermo is helpful for us to sort of just be mindful that uh, this is still still very much an active pandemic that we need to be sensitive to. So um, thank you for that, Guillermo. I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and absolutely, please stay, stay, please stay safe. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Rich. Thank thank you. Cuidado. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, so really the last thing I wanted to get over uh, to talk through today uh, is um, is the fact that I, I put out a request for a call for uh, uh, HCSIG uh, chair nominees. Uh, I, I've been I've been chairing this uh, special interest group for just over I think two years now, and I think it's about time that I that I step away. Um, and so what what we're doing is uh, I, I put a request out. Uh, for uh, nominees, and and ideally, uh, these would be uh, folks that have been, uh, in some way, regularly involved in the in uh, in the organization, uh, at least for some period of time. Um, 
it uh, the 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 really the plan would be that we try to get uh, the handover to happen probably in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, it really is. It it'll really honestly it'll really depend on uh, on you know who who steps up and then uh, if we get enough folks together we can put together uh, an election. Um, uh, Erica is my uh, vice chair, uh, but uh, my my sense uh, I think Erica and I've talked about this is Erica's got right now an awful lot on her plate, uh, and so uh, we're, we're debating whether uh, whether Erica has time uh, to take on the chair role and and to really give it uh, do justice to that. And so uh, I want to make sure that we open this uh, this uh, nomination up to everyone in membership that uh, has been actively involved. Um, if uh, ideally the work effort, uh, if anyone has an interest, uh, is uh, to be honest, fairly low. Um, uh, you get into sort of a routine, um, and uh, and so the, just the, just operationally, um, uh, the, uh, clearly there's you know prep time to to put together agendas and and sort of you know uh, develop the the wiki pages and so forth. Um, and uh, and outside of that, um, there's a, a little bit of report up that that goes uh, to hyperledger.org uh, and Linux Foundation. Um, but outside of that, the, the really honestly, the upshot is the real benefit is uh, the opportunity from from this perspective um, to to really uh, interface with the much broader um, blockchain technologies community, uh, and I would say healthcare community in general. Uh, at a global level, I've uh, and Erica and I have talked about this uh, recently. Uh, one of the great things with being in the position uh, of of helping to sort of uh, drive uh, direction on the special interest group is uh, I've really I've been invited to be to participate in quite a number of different uh, organizational events. Uh, many of them academically based, which is a great opportunity for myself personally. Um, and uh, and so uh, that's one of the one of the things that I think I'll probably miss uh, most of all is is that opportunity to to you know be involved uh, in so many sort of peripheral uh, sort of opportunities. Um, uh, so anyway, so something to think about. Um, normally, typically, uh, the uh, the the plan, uh, and of course, the, this healthcare special interest group is really the first uh, special interest group that came out of Hyperledger. Uh, we developed this probably about, oh gosh, I want to say uh, around 2017, uh, maybe even sooner than that. So about three 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 years ago or so, um, and and it really at that time it was simply just a listserv. Uh, we really didn't have anything else at that time. Um, and then we uh, put together the Rocket uh, Chat uh, channel, and then from there we we sort of developed out from from that point and, and formalized things a bit. Uh, the charter that uh, this uh, special interest group uh, created is really the uh, the baseline for all their uh, groups within Hyperledger uh, since we were the first ones through. So uh, we have, uh, I'll just say, a, a bit of cachet maybe um, in in having really helped develop an awful lot about what Hyperledger is about from the community side. Um, and uh, obviously very proud of that. Uh, we have a great great team of people that have been uh, participating in helping to de develop that sort of, uh, sort of feel. Uh, and, and there's a certain level of professionalism that I'm very thankful for. Uh, and uh, clearly we've matured uh, that over the past couple of years uh, and, and I'm real happy for that as well. Um, so, uh, and, and, oh, and, and my point was going to be that uh, ideally, uh, the, the tenure for, um, uh, for the chair position and also the vice chair position is supposed to be a one-year cycle uh, that's, that ideally uh, is supposed to really uh, sort of um, happen at the end of every, every uh, calendar year. Uh, one of the one of the unfortunate side effects is that I, I believe Hyperledger uh, leadership team uh, takes the last couple of weeks off of of the year, and so we're trying to trying to move move the move that uh, sort of time frame around so it's a little less impactful on uh, on their time frame, and so uh, we we're moving that uh, to the summertime, so that's where we are now. Um, so if if anyone on the call uh, has been actively involved, and, and most people uh, uh, on today's call particularly uh, have been involved, and, and clearly uh, any any of you that that are you know regulars on this call, uh, I'd be thrilled to have you get involved. If you have an interest, uh, please let me know. 
Um, and uh, ideally, we're trying to get this uh, sort of put together uh, uh, by the end of this month. Um, and so uh, when we get started next month, uh, I'll be helping to facilitate sort of that transition uh, into uh, getting a new chair sort of uh, spun up into the special interest group. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah, great, Rich. Uh, your contribution to the healthcare SIG is I great know. for the community. Oh, thank you. So, uh, yeah, so Rich, uh, did you get any nomination for the, or uh, not yet? No, not not yet. I, I anticipate it'll, it may take a little while. Um, uh, anything that we push through listserv, uh, generally we, we get, a, it, it, there's, it, it, there seems, always seems to be a little bit of a delay. And to be honest, the way that I sort of treat uh, some of the, some of the sorts of things that I do on other organizations, uh, I usually wait, uh, I usually wait until the weekend when I have some free time to sort of catch up on my uh, sort of uh, uh, fun email. So I anticipate it, it may be another week or, or so until we get uh, a good set of, of folks together. But uh, so short answer is, is no, not really. Uh, I have had people in, inquire uh, and honestly, um, inquiries are fine and I, but I, I personally um, I haven't really got a sense for uh, what I would consider to be a, a real, a real nominee that I that I'd want to put forward. Hey, Rich. So the application process is just sending an email to you and the listserv, and then stating why you believe you or someone else is uh, worthy of this, or or how does it work? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, and what's going to happen is uh, Hyperledger Leadership sort of manages it, um, but but the mechanism effectively is to get the nominations uh, on the list for, uh, for the eventual election would, would be just, uh, yeah, just generating, generating an email. Uh, and ideally it would be preferred if it went to all listserv. I mean, feel, feel free to contact me directly if you have questions, but what I'd, what I'd really like to do is uh, generate some, some open discussion with the whole community and remember that our uh, our HC SIG uh, community is about a thousand members uh, globally, and so we have an awful lot of folks that are part of the community. That uh, I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to sort of get a sense for uh, who may be involved in uh, in the nomination process, uh, so that people may be able to to generate some feedback or generate support against uh, the nominees. So yeah, so so the, the so the process would be uh, send an email up to the listserv. Uh, either nominating yourself or uh, nominating someone else, and then you know a, a short a couple of sentences that define why you think you would be a good nominee, or or you know a, a proxy, someone that you think would be a good nominee. I will say I am going to. It sounds selfish, but I am going to put myself up for that. Um, I'll, I'll be sending an email to the group by today. Thank you. Oh, perfect. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Hey, Rich, this is Ravish. I just wanted to. You know, thank you for all your leadership. I mean, the the structure that you put in place. I mean, trust me, I'm still trying to follow what you you have been, and you know, you do an excellent job at that. So I just wanted to personally thank you for all your efforts and and you know, keeping these things, keeping the momentum going, and bringing in various speakers. I mean, a, excellent job. I just want to convey that to you. Oh, uh, thank you, Ravisha. Yeah, I uh, th thanks very much. I appreciate that. Uh, it has been it really. It has. It's been a great opportunity for me uh, to be involved. Um, I, I think I get a lot of questions about, you know, why do I get involved in, in an organization like this? And to be honest, uh, and I think uh, uh, Tariq. I think we we met earlier today. I was very much like Tariq early on, and this is uh, well two or three years ago, I guess it was. Uh, I want to get more involved in understanding about how blockchain technologies uh, fit into the healthcare community. Uh, my interest happens to be uh, healthcare related as, as it relates specifically to, to technology implementation. Uh, and my interest in blockchain uh, really sort of led myself uh, uh, to, to, to looking at different frameworks. Uh, and uh, I had looked at a framework called Blockstack initially, uh, which at that time was tended to be more closed source. And then I came up, you know, really effectively came across Hyperledger, which was open source, part of Linux Foundation which meant to me open source, open community, and my background as a developer allowed me to, to, to actually go look at the code and go play with the code. Uh, and that's really how I got involved 
uh, here, uh, and then you know you just uh, you you get involved uh, in. Uh, I think I got involved initially in the patient subgroup, uh, and uh, and just recognized an interest in uh, an, an opportunity to uh, to help to help mature the. Uh, at that time, it was it was called a working group, um, and again. It, the, the, we were very, very new uh, as far as uh, Hyperledger uh, proper, the project uh, proper got uh, was a couple, this is, you know, three years ago, I guess. And so uh, it's just my nature to, to say, okay, well, I'm, I, I'd love to sort of step into this and help help sort of drive uh, some of the momentum and, uh, and set the cadence for some of the work that we do here. Uh, so I, I really have enjoyed it. It has been an absolute pleasure. And again, as I had mentioned earlier, uh, the, the great opportunities uh, to speak with other folks uh, in and around uh, the world uh, in, in multiple contexts and, uh, and really to learn an awful lot um, and to make, uh, to make some very, 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 very good acquaintances uh, at a global level. It's, it's really been a, a great opportunity. Yeah, I also want to join to Ravish. He jumped in and I could, uh, I just wanted to say also my deep appreciation of your leadership. Thank you very much, Rich. Oh, thank you, Dennis. Yeah, well, well, so, uh, so Dennis. It was uh, not only a leadership, it was also a great human touch. Thank you very <laughs> thank for the you. whole uh, great uh, co collaboration, organization and everything. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Dennis. Yeah, and well, so so Dennis is a great example. Uh, you know, also Ravish, uh, Erica. Uh, the, you know, you you get uh, you get to know people uh, as people, uh, and it really doesn't matter you know where people live anymore these days. Uh, actually, Dennis and I did have a great opportunity to meet at uh, the Hims Conference two years ago, uh, and so it's it you know one again one of the great things uh, is the opportunity that a position like this affords. Uh, someone and so yeah again it's it's been a really a great experience and so uh, thank you Dennis I appreciate it okay uh, again so if anyone has any questions feel free to contact me directly uh, and then if you do have an interest in in uh, in, in getting more involved and taking over the chair role uh, yeah uh, please post up to listserv um, and uh, we'll, we'll get that sort of uh, routed. I, and again, ideally, the, the, uh, the thinking here is that we'll, we'll uh, keep nominations open to the end of the month. Uh, and then that last week of this month, we'll, be, uh, we'll, we'll get uh, an election together. Uh, it'll basically be um, a survey uh, and, and, and a voting process that'll open up to membership. Um, and uh, we'll work it that way. Uh, and then come next month, we should have ourselves a new chair, and uh, I'll obviously be helping to transition uh, that person uh, over uh, into the new role, and then I'll sort of slowly sort of step out of the loop. Okay, um, so are uh, any, any other questions or thoughts before we sort of close out? That's me, Rich. I, I believe that I'm, you know, one of the, 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 the newbies here and I really appreciate all the the support that you have been uh, providing to us, especially with me. I mean, the speed up and the understanding of uh, the way how it works, uh, the special groups and 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 all the things around uh, this uh, uh, community. It's uh, thanks to you. Uh, even we have been. Uh, meet each other a few months. I believe that, that you are a great leader and, and you have a, a, a great way to uh, explain in very detail the way how it works. So thank you very much. I, I didn't want to uh, pass this opportunity to, to, to say thanks. And as you said uh, in Spanish, uh, muchas gracias, mi amigo. So, <laughs> gracias. Uh, well, thank you, thank you, Guillermo. I, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, thank you. And and again, y you would you would be another g excellent example of of uh, someone that uh, that that you know that that I was able to meet uh, by way of this organization. Uh, we had a, a great conversation earlier this year. Uh, for for those of the, uh, those of you on the call that maybe don't remember, Guillermo was able to to, to present. Uh, a bit about what was going on in Mexico. Uh, and it, that to me uh, is invaluable uh, for us to have sort of a global understanding of, of what's going on specifically as it relates to the COVID uh, pandemic. 
uh, this this really is invaluable, and I and I think you know uh, having these opportunities uh, is really critical to understand what the real issues are, and then uh, when we have a better sense for what those issues are, uh, what the real uh, solution ought to be, uh, with with really sort of that f sort of real faceted understanding of what the problem space is. Well, thanks again, Guillermo, and gracias. Hello. Uh, okay, uh, we just got a couple of minutes left. Uh, we have uh, an, another meeting coming up in two weeks. Uh, I believe it's just it'll it'll be another general meeting, um, and so uh, at that time, I think we'll have a better sense for uh, what our platform will look like, uh, for who our next uh, chair will be, and so we'll we've got fingers crossed uh, as we get to the end of the month. And so thanks thanks everyone. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, obviously, be very, very safe, uh, and uh, we will see uh, see everyone here in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. And Rich, you're never leaving us, so we'll see you in the future too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. Take care. <laughs>